Hello and welcome back to Black Book Stacks. I am your host, Hoshonda Sanders. Um, thank you so much for your likes, your shares, and your subscribes. I appreciate them. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you. I basically talk about books for, by people of color here. Um, I review them, I talk about what I'm going to read, and uh, because I'm fairly new at this, um, even though I'm not new to book reviewing, I am open and flexible to what comes. So uh, I am open to your suggestions as well. You can hit me up um, via the contact information in the description box below. And with that, I will get into it. I loved Tina Lifford's The, Big, the Little Book of Big Lies. Um, this is a gorgeous cover of her. Obviously, if you are not familiar, she plays Aunt Fi in Queen Sugar, which I'm also a huge fan of. I generally really love um, self-help books for some reason. Uh, I've loved them since I was a kid. And part of what I love about them is, and what I love about the genre, is that it offers you really concrete tools if you're not a person who's inclined to therapy or maybe you can't afford therapy. Um, or maybe you just don't have access, right? Um, there is something really gratifying and useful, of course, about having access to a book like this. Um, it is not a substitute for therapy. I don't want to suggest that, but I would say that um, having wisdom offered to you from other people who have gone and along the path ahead of you. I think this is why people are so inspired. I know I am by Oprah's Super Soul Sundays and you know also all of the other um, endeavors that she in on which in, during through which she gives advice. Um, uh, I would say Ayala Van Zandt um, who blurbs this book uh, has also been really integral to me as a black woman um, with a very um, consistent spiritual practice, um, and I'm describing a Dr. Van Zandt here, um, and also myself, um, but it's been inspiring to think about, you know, in the 90s it was thinking about whether or not, you know, um, there was her metaphor for uh, where you were in the house, right? So if you were like living in the basement and meant that you were living kind of basically at your lowest vibration or like the lowest aspect of what you could be living and if you were like living you know up in the attic that's where you were really getting somewhere because you were um kind of enlightened or close to it um so what i love about um the little book of big lies by tina a lot lifford this is um the subtitle is a journey into inner fitness it has a foreword by michael beckwith um and uh so First of all, I appreciate the candor that Tina has here. Um, I want to call her Miss Lifford, so I think I'm going to do that just out of respect to my elders. Um, and one, I didn't know, I didn't realize that she had um, a whole nother life outside of acting. So I think that's great. Um, I think she says that she's been acting for like 37 years in her bio, which is incredible. Um, so. I think I did act, I did think I added it up correctly, but math is like not really my jam. Um, but she says that she act, she began her acting career in 1983. Um, but she also is um, a playwright, CEO of the Inner Fitness Project, which she describes as a personal development network that teaches individuals to focus more on thriving than on surviving. Um, and as someone who survived a lot, it's really uh, it's been helpful and useful to me to have books like this that kind of go step by step in um, getting you to reframe how you think about things that happen to you. So this is less about like, I'm going to teach you to have like a framework for your faith. You know, she talks about the inner self as God. If you're an atheist or agnostic, that's not really necessarily going to resonate with you. But um, I think uh, in the same way that it would with someone like me, who's, you know, Christian, who's a believer, who um, you know, kind of combines a lot of different kinds of spiritual practice. At the same time, I think it's really interesting to think about the questions that she asks us to think about. Right. So she says, you know, through my play, The Circle and articles through writing scripts and facilitating workshops, I look at pain with my eyes focused on resilience and healing. Um, and 
when she talks about inner fitness, she's talking about um, the journey we all yearn for, women and men without knowing it, to wake up from the relentless harassment of the naysaying, self-doubting inner critic. And I think, of course, this is a wonderful time of year to be thinking about this, right? Because it is January, a lot of us have New Year's goals and resolutions, maybe you have a word that you're going to meditate on for the year. So it's really amazing to think about engaging with the self and not just getting stronger physically and in your physical fitness, which I think, you know, I don't know anyone who doesn't like think about that or worry about it a little bit. Um, I think you're not really human if you're not like, hmm, am I how fit am I? Am not that fit? Whatever. But like on the inside, thinking about um, how you can be as fit as possible, you know, and she talks a lot about herself and her own personal journey. Um, and then there are um, practices. So, you know, like they look like this. Uh, it's the it's the inner inner fitness practice uh, and she identifies the big lie so you know in this case it's the self you see in the mirror is all that you are the truth is is that you are so much more than the image you see in the mirror the all-pervading intelligent nature and power that governs the universe lives inside of you give it room and its presence will expand so you know she talks about the lies that we tell ourselves um you know uh, i I meditate so um, you know the way that we talk about this is the um, samsara you know guys kind of getting caught in cycles of delusion and uh, if you're meditators when I say we talking about meditators um, so by kind of breaking that cycle and start starting to identify that there is like kind of this inner voice that is c consistently like just kind of bringing you down trying to bring you down um and also connected to that like when people make you upset what is it actually that's happening right so this there's like a whole <laughs> it resonated with me so much i i dog-eared a bunch of this uh, even though i did have my my trusty old bookmark here with me but first was you know she was talking about the things that you can't do but then also this this phrase i'm upset because this is a question seven um the chapters are break, broken up into questions um and she asks you for instance to ask yourself when was the first time i felt this way or experienced this kind of reaction um which can take you to a stored memory that holds these answers about like if something triggers you or sends you down a rabbit hole of emotion it's not necessarily that that person is upsetting you per se like or that it's like this isolated incident is obviously probably connected to something else in your past which is like a duh like of course you know that at the same time like it is revelatory and interesting to think about that in the context of okay well here lately you know like here in 2020 like how am i actually putting this tool that I have in my favor, which is basically just like looking inward instead of like moving things outward and blaming people for my stuff and my issues and my emotional reactions. Um, and yeah, this is just like a worthy, I think, time period while the the, the year and the decade is new to, to look at that stuff. So um, I thought that was helpful. Um, because on the same page, she says, looking within is a profound act of self-care. It sends the message, I matter, to every cell in our bodies. All, all living things, including our own cells, respond to such care. Really beautiful. To dissolve our upset, we must take the look within that healing and freedom require. So I think if you're um, someone who, like me, we just like really love self-help books and, you know, like kind of gets a kick out of them, it's actually a really fast read. Um, I think it took me a couple days to finish it, um, but it was one of the first ones that I finished this year, obviously, since we just started. Um, and there's some really cool um, kind of like Instagram snapshot exciting kind of quotes here at the back of the book too um if you just need like a little snippet um and it looks like she's on ig at at tina liffert dot hmm, no i think it's just at tina liffert 
So yeah, I would say if you're interested in doing some inner work here at the, the beginning part of 2020, this is a good one for you. Um, and what I do, I mean, this, this color, like this cover pops and um, I didn't even really recognize her when I first saw it. I was like, what is, what's going on? Who is, the, oh, oh, I know her. She looks familiar. You know, she looks like, like one of my aunties or something. So anyway, um, if you, let's see, it's published by Amistad. It's $23.99. Let me see what else. Um, the website um, for her company is theinnerfitnessproject.com. Um, I often take the, I know what I was going to say. I often take the cover off when I'm reading on the subway because I cannot with people who are like, hmm, oh, you know, it's like, I can't, I don't know. Maybe you guys are different and a little bit more like understanding when people interrupt you, but people will interrupt you if you keep the cover on, especially a cover like this probably. So that's just a pro tip. If you're commuting anywhere where people are likely to ask you what you're reading and, and interrupt you in the middle of your, your book. Um, that is what I have for you. I hope uh, I would give this um, four stars. Uh, I definitely thought it was a, a really worthy read and really interesting and lots of stuff to digest, um, but also like pretty light. So I hope if you pick it up, you really enjoy it. And I will see you next time at Black Book Stacks. Thanks so much. And I hope you're enjoying January.